So let me just show you quickly the setup of proxy rigs and cross-loading animation on character rigs in Lightwave. Of course, this applies to absolutely any character rig that's been set up in any way in Lightwave, but it's you know particularly useful with Rigit. And it can help speed up things an awful lot for you. So basically all it consists of is just taking your character mesh and, you know, chopping it into pieces like this. And then just parenting those pieces to the appropriate parts of the control rig, which you can do very quickly here in Schematic Editor just by, you know, selecting and control clicking. And that really is very much all that there is to it. Parent all of the pieces off. You delete, of course, the deform rig. You notice that my deform rig here is gone. I've just got the control rig. Of course, I can remove my deforming version of the character there. Uh, the pieces at the moment, I've still got sub-patched, but I can, of course, just set those to any sub-patch level I want, or, of course, set each piece individually. And so that's basically it. Um, what this gives us, of course, is a much faster rig, which we can just animate on as normal there. Some terrible piece of animation I've got there. If we just drop in a little frame rate meter there, what we see here on the basic biped is um, I am getting 30 frames a second here. This is sort of stuttering because of the recording software. But I assure you, when I click pause, this just goes straight up to 30 frames a second. Um, so, of course, we get much quicker performance out of our rigs by not having a deform rig in there. So we can very easily get real-time playback when animating our characters, no problem, no need to hit preview. Now, of course, what we need to do is we need to transfer this motion back onto our main hero character, of course. And there's two ways that we can do that. Let's take a look first at Lightwave 11, which is the easiest way to do it, but does require Lightwave 11. We open up our hero version of the character that's got all of the deforms in. Uh, we go load from scene. We click expand and select all to make sure that any slider action that we've keyed is transferred over as well. Um, we check merge only motion envelopes. I can turn off the lights and camera of course and we hit OK. And there we have it basically. Our animation has come in. You'll notice that of course all of the pieces of our proxy object have come in. That's because they weren't in this master scene and when you do a merge motion envelopes if there are objects that you option to merge I could have unchecked all of these little pieces in the list but I didn't bother because um, it's far quicker not to and just to now block select them and clear them all okay um, you notice that the animation has of course correctly transferred to our control rig but again a tiny little bug has caused the deform rig to sort of unhook so all I need to do is select the our human mesh switch to bones mode bring up its properties and of course use bones from deform rig so there we go that turns our deform rig back on and we can see that everything behaves itself just wonderfully um, and our animation has transferred over quite properly so we've been able to animate on a much faster and more interactive rig um, and bring the motions on very cleanly now if we're not doing this in 11 there are further bugs in the merge motion envelopes which if you're not using version 11 um, means that you can't use that process so if you're on an earlier version such as 10.1, 9.6, then here is how you do it instead. Basically, what you want to do is select all of the controllers of the control rig, both the FK and the IK, of course, there. Next thing you want is a plugin, Multimotion GN V2. This allows you to load and save motion files, so we're going to do that. I've opted, of course, to change a new directory here. I've chosen to call this moves.m2l. Don't ask me why, but if you don't enter the .m2l, then it won't do the directory change properly. Um, we leave this and this unchanged. We're going to choose save. Load save type is user selected. Match name mode is match exact names, and we're going to click OK. That saves our motion scene there. From our proxy rig, we come back in back onto our hero character here. We again select all of the controllers here in the control rig and of course those in the IK. We go back to multi-motion, find our files there, choose open, change the mode to load, click OK. So turn back on, there it is, there's our motion applied correctly to our control rig. 
no mess, no fuss. The only thing that you will find with using the multi-motion is that it only loads the channels for objects, items. You can also do it for bones and whatnot. Well, it, what it will not load are channels for master channels here. So, of course, if you've used a rig where you've got IKFK switching going on, you need for the sliders animation to also be transferred, in which case you need to use a two-stage process in 10.1 and earlier. And basically, to do the second stage, you simply want to use Lightwave's own load from scene. Click Expand and select None, because you're not wanting to bring over the motion of the objects. That won't work. But you do want to bring over the master channels. So you select those, choose Merge Only Motion Envelopes, click OK. And now your animation on your items stays the same, but any animation on the sliders will be pulled across as well. Of course, in Lightwave 11, that just happened as a part of the load from scene that we did for the entire character. And that's all there is to it. So I hope you found this helpful in working with your characters and rigs and getting the best performance out of Lightwave and being able to successfully get those motions back onto your hero characters. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.